Hi and welcome to this DCP Web HTML5 and CSS Beginners tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add comments to your CSS file. So comments are quite important. If we open up our web browser and then we open up, uh, let's get Notepad++ open. We should have our code in here already where we left off last time. And then we'll minimize this a bit. Let's just drag our Sun project into here temporarily and we want to add comments in here Now, when you're working with a team I have a few members in my team of developers we we may switch our workload around quite a lot so someone might be working on something on one day and then someone else might pick that up on another day it's not normally like that but if someone's on holiday they may need to pick up the work later so as developers it's quite important that we if we're all working on different projects that when someone else takes over we need to know what they did and why they did it for a certain reason. Not everything, most things are quite intuitive. So when you're reading, you can just read the code and understand it. But if here, for example, um, we change this to a, a class, right? And then we went to the styles and we saw no class there. We'll be thinking like, what's going on? There's a class here to target this header one tag but there's no class in the HTML. So really what would happen here is the, the developer would have copied this class, the one above, um, and instead of targeting it via ID, he would have done h1.myheadertitle. Then we refresh, we'll see that, right? But now there's two of them. So the, the other developer looking at this is thinking, right, why is there two of them? I don't understand this. So what the developer would have done is put a comment. So he put a slash star, and then underneath here, we'll leave a bit of space, and you'll put a star slash like this. And anything between these um, these tags here will be regarded as a comment and will be ignored by the web browser. So when we refresh, it will just ignore this content. Then in here, he, the developer might write dev note, developer note. We will use this. ID later to change color of title using JavaScript. So if I were to look at this project and my developers on holiday and I open up this project, I'm looking at it and I'm reading it, I'm going through the code and I've got some notes that I need to do some work, then I look at this tag here and it says class intro text are coming to here and I see the class, the H1 tag here. Uh, the h1 class here for the header one tag and i see this note above then maybe i'll go and do that javascript programming and that, there might be some other more detailed notes on that in the documentation it says this particular title after a certain amount of seconds the client said change it to a different color for whatever reason or there might have been a picture here right of the sun and the client says after a certain amount of time do something to that picture like remove it or or change it to something else or do something so we might use javascript to do that you got to remember um, HTML and CSS are really just uh, what we call front end uh, design tools, right? Or coding languages. They're not even they're not really even uh, coding. They're just uh, markup languages. So we'll use JavaScript later to manipulate the H1 tag to make it do something in particular. It might change font size. It might change color. We can do loads of different things with JavaScript. So I just want to really, in this tutorial, just emphasize that we can put comments in here. And comments are quite important, especially for yourself as well. If you're just working on a website project and you're finished for the day and you know that you've got to do something quite important on that project tomorrow, why not just add a little comment in here? The comment doesn't have to surround um, a particular element either, right? So you could write a comment here. just a general comment and it could be like need to add images to website and style with CSS so you can write a comment there like this so when you come back tomorrow and you look at it you may write that down on a bit of paper but it'd be nice if we write it in here so if another designer is taking over then he'll know you need to do that or for your own note there's a little note for you tomorrow that that's something that you need to do on this particular project. 
So I just wanted to show you comments. I'll leave these ones here for now. So when we continue this project, we may add more comments as we go along. You can even add comments to these, um, you know, I think naming convention, when you name something, if you name it correctly, like intro text, then when you come here, if intro text was right down at the bottom of the page somewhere on the footer, it would make no sense, right? So name your classes logically, give them a sensible name. So then when you look at the CSS and when you look at the HTML, if I was looking at this and my designer or my developer is working on this project and they called this intro text, I would you know, intuitively think, okay, intro text has to be at the top somewhere. It's the introduction text. But if we call this something like, I don't know, text one, that would mean nothing to me. So when I'm looking for that, it's just making my life more difficult, right? And your own life more difficult. So name your class is quite good. Give them a sensible name. And then later, if you want to write a comment about it, you would never even need to write a comment about this intro text. You'll know what it is straight away. So name things quite well, and that will help you as well. So let's save this, close this. I just wanted to quickly show you adding comments, and we'll continue in the next tutorial on some more coding in CSS.